Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm taking a bit of a chance here. My grandson, um, he is three and um, has autism and he is obsessed with dinosaurs. And I saw this Christmas book and I thought, mm, I bet his daddy would like to read that to him at bedtime. So this is a book, it's a children's storybook, a Christmas storybook by Tom Fletcher illustrated by Shane uh, I'm not going to say it, I can't do it <laughs> this is the Christmasaurus and the Naughty List and it is a full children's book, it's hardback well when it arrived you'll see to my delight if I take the front cover off, this is a hardback book if I just slip the, cover, the dust sheet off that's the back cover look at it isn't that adorable? Well, yes it is a storybook, but I'll put this back over. Excuse my dressing gown. If you've watched my last flip through that I just did, I'm not well again. I just I keep getting everything. So anyway, to cut a long story short, is this gorgeous story which I haven't read yet and I don't really know much about. Being the age I am and my children are now grown up. But look at the illustrations. I don't know if I can bring you in a little bit. Look at that illustration. And he's on the front cover. So we could try and emulate the pictures, is what I th what my theory was. Now that this little nuddy boy, isn't he cute? Um, they're not on every page, but this is the naughty list of children. Let me come back out slightly. I paid £6.75 for this hardback version from Amazon, I will link it down below and you've got all the characters on the front cover this gorgeous shiny cover so we could do them as the cover says and turn it into a coloured children's book now it's quite a challenge because like I say it's chunky but if we work out the colour schemes <clears throat> Look at this image down the bottom here, can you see that? If we work out the colour schemes for characters, it wouldn't take too long. The images aren't big. So you've got a little bit at the top of each chapter. And then lots and lots of writing. And then let me just... I'm not going to be able to flip through the whole book, but I just want to give you an idea. I mean, look at that. What an image. I have just posted this on my Facebook group and said if anybody's interested in colouring the whole book, um, look at the illustrations, are just beautiful. Because I thought, what a gift, you know, to give. Um, the paper is like you won't expect storybook paper, so I don't think it certainly wouldn't, I wouldn't attempt to use wet media on it but maybe a bit of ink um, and pro possibly do it with Prismas because they're lovely and soft and buttery and wouldn't sort of imprint on the pages um, beyond. I mean, so they're not particularly... What am I trying to say? They will be a challenge, but they're not going to take up hours and hours of time. So I don't know what your thoughts are. I adore it. And I would love to colour this, be a completed book. Uh, I know it's Christmas, but I love Christmas stuff. So I'm just trying to flip through. Look, there's that bully. There he is at the front. He looks like a bully. I don't know anything about him. He might not be. But there he is at the front. This little guy. Um, I haven't read the book, like I say. Let's go on. There's just so many beautiful illustrations in here. There's another one. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? I love it. Another one. I'm just going to try and flip through to find all the gorgeous illustrations. Look. I couldn't believe my luck when it turned up. I was like, what? This is begging to be coloured in. What are we doing here? What am I doing? So, yeah, I don't think it would be quick, but 
and not all the images are Christmassy, which is what I like. I know it's a Christmas story, but it doesn't have to just necessarily be done at Christmas. So we could work on this a bit at a time, you know, an image an image a week sort of thing, or whatever, I don't know, however, whatever people thought, but it's just something a little different. I love that, look at that image. Very dark, but inks would work, and so would, the, we know the prismas would work. The paper's got a nice tooth to it, it'd be like colouring um, on Amazon print paper, I would think, but we know that the prismas work beautifully. And I just think something different and a little adventurous for us. You know? You'll have to let me know what you think. I'm going to keep flipping while I'm well enough to talk. It's been hideous. I've been really poorly and had huge amounts of anxiety around different things. Um, but yeah. So when this arrived, I thought I've got to share this with my friends and see what they think because I think this is a book we could tackle quite easily and have a wonderful colour children's story. I don't know anything about um, Tom Fletcher. I, I'm thinking that I'm going to be shouting down and people are going to say, Lucy, how do you not know him? But um, like I say, my children are grown up. Aren't these images incredible? I don't know, maybe it's just me, I don't know, and having been ill and maybe not thinking straight, but I just, you know, we all talk about legacy books, don't we, that we can hand down. This certainly could be one. I mean, Joseph, my grandson, is only three, so there's time for me to, to do it. And do you know what? It's such a beautiful book that even if he, you know, we didn't have grandchildren or children to give it to. What an accomplishment. And even as an adult, and one that works in a school with children, there's nothing more special than picking up a book that's easy to read and has a wonderful storyline. So, let me keep going. Just, do you see what I mean? They're not huge pictures, so they're not going to take forever. But once you've got the characters from the front cover worked out, you could write down the colour scheme and keep them so you know which pencils to go to. So we're not permanently looking for, oh, what colour are we going to use here? And, you know, all that challenging stuff that we have. Isn't she adorable? <laughs> Gorgeous, isn't she? And the illustrations are just so cute. Look at that one. A bit of a comic strip one. So I'm going to keep going because I want you to be able to see and I want you to be able to tell me what your thoughts are on whether this is something you think you'd enjoy seeing and doing with me or have I just lost the plot? <laughs> oh, I do apologise for my chest yet again, like I say, I've been ill again <coughs> and I just never seem to, I'm not, just not seem to pick up. But, um... Yeah, look at him. I just, yeah, I don't know, I'm waffling now, folks, but to my thrill when I opened it, I mean, even the little pictures that you get at the front of, uh, at the top of the new chapters are just gorgeous. And like I say, not all the pictures look Christmassy, so we could get away with doing it when it's not Christmas. See, that doesn't look Christmas, does it? It's hurting my thumb now, keep flipping, but we're going to do it. Look at that one. Isn't he gorgeous? And really, you know, you could add colour to the background, but just that pop of colour in certain places would really bring this alive, even more than it already is. Oh, look at that one. Isn't she cute? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting carried away and you can't see it all. Um, there she is again. Is she on the front cover? Yeah, she is. She's there, look. So she's wearing pink. 
Can you see that? Sorry about my hands shaking. Um, is she on the front cover? I can't see her. Um, I can't see her, but there's no harm in making her up, is that? She could be there, I don't know. There we are. What do you think, folks? I really want to have a go at this. And I might actually come back in a minute and try it out with that little nudie boy at the front and see how the prisms work. Look at that little nativity scene and the little baby's in <laughs> the star. Oh, it's so cute. So even if we didn't use it as a storybook and we weren't fussed, the illustrations are divine. There we are, another little nudie boy. What is it with him running around naked? We'll have to read the book and find out. Oh, that's nice. Well, he looks a bit traumatised, but... A bit of diversity and inclusion. Oh dear, she looks fierce. Sorry, I keep. I have to move the book up and down because I want you to be able to see the images. So we are, I've actually done a flip through of it. Um, well, we'll have by the time we get to the end. So you'll have seen everything that there is to colour, and then you can let me know what you think. But I might actually, when we've seen all the images. I might pause the video and have a go at colouring the little nudie boy at the front and see just how it responds. And then we can have a chat and a catch up. That's a gorgeous picture, isn't it? So the Dinosaurus, or actually he's the Christmasaurus, is flying that little lad in his wheelchair over the sea. Look, there's the cliffs. Isn't that lovely? Can you see properly? So, so cute. I love it. <laughs> it's just incredible. And we've got another one up here. Oh, he's, it looks like he's in a museum pretending to be part of the show. <laughs> oh, look at it. It looks like Big Ben. Yeah, it is up the Thames, which is the river bias run through my quite near me the just oh look look at that I love it people I hope you do too I hope I'm going to start a whole thing off with you guys wanting to colour it and that we absolutely slam Amazon and Tom Fletcher, or wherever we want to get it from, um, book for us all to be colouring along together. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. And then we've got that delightful little image at the bottom. And then that's the inside cover with all our characters on. So, if I put the dust jacket carefully back on for a minute, um, I want to just read you what the back says. So we get an idea of... Um... Oh, well, so you guys, do you know... Listen, so he is, after writing songs with his band McFly for several years, Tom Fletcher turned his hand to writing stories. He's now one of the UK's best-selling authors for children. Oh, I thought I recognised the name. I'm such a numpty. So I was trying to find was if there was a little synopsis or a blurb about the story. Let me click on Amazon. I'm right up here. Bear with me. And I'll read you what it says. Um, here we are. Does it say anything? 
it says, you know about the naughty list, right? Um, well, this year, the Christmas Saurus is on a mission to track down children who have found themselves on the naughty list to help them return, or help them turn naughty to nice. Then it says, this is a collection of stories about mischievous kids learning the error of their ways, but is also about sharing the true spirit of Christmas and realising that some things, excuse me, that some things aren't quite as they first appear. Isn't that wonderful? What a lovely message. And they're short stories, so we don't have to read a whole entire book. We can read short stories and just enjoy. So let me come back out a bit. So this is McFly, <laughs> Tom Fletcher. It says, a magical new festive adventure from the number one best-selling author. I can't really tell you anything more about it without reading, but I am going to pause the video, and I think... Do I try the little nuddy boy? I think I might. So, I'll either be back in two minutes, and we'll colour the nuddy... Well, I will. We'll be back in two minutes, and I'll colour the little nuddy boy with you. <laughs> I'll see you in a second. So I'm back folks and what you're going to see now is a clip that I, because I couldn't figure out how to edit it because my brain's not with it still at the moment. What you're going to see is the picture that I've done with the pastel pencils. I used Derwent, let me show you, I used Derwent pastel pencils. Um, that's going to come first, and then I'm going to do the one with the Prisma, which is chatting to you like I just joined you back. I do apologise. Um, but I wasn't happy with the Prisma one. That's the Prisma one. And then here is the Pastel Pencils, which suits the paper so much better. So I just wanted to explain that I'm going to jump in and say, oh, I didn't, I'm back. I'm going to use the Pastel Pencils. I didn't like the Prismas, just to make it clear. And then when I've done that, which is only a few minutes it takes with the pastels, I'll come back in with the Prismas and it'll all make sense. <laughs> I hope that's okay, folks. All right, back to the video. Okay, guys, back again. I'm not entirely happy with the Prismas performance in here. Although it looks okay, it did kind of tear the paper up. So I had an idea. I'm going to put my piece of paper behind. Let's have a go with the Derwent Pastel Pencils. They're soft enough to coat. Um, we'll just try. Soft enough to coat. And they have beautiful colours in it. So, I'm just going to find myself um, a little paper tortillion, which come in packs like this on Amazon. I just want a small one. A little tiny stubby one, that'll do. Let's put those to one side. They also come with these, which is just a little bit of sandpaper on a board. When you've coloured, you just scrape it off and it cleans your brush off. So, skin colours. Let's have a look. I have got... So this is the Derwent Pastel Pencils. I have got Flesh which is P150. I think that's P. You'll be able to see it better than me like that. P150 flash. And we are going to... Now the beauty of these is that they're so soft that it's not going to tear that paper up. And... We can do lots of layers of blending. And they're quick and they're easy. Look at that. That's so much better. I don't know why I didn't think of it to start with. Then other parts of it we can do with ink. And then the pastel pencils over the top. <sighs> Won't be a problem. Just, just about having fun, folks, isn't it? Okay. So I've got a coat of flesh down. Let's just blow it off a little bit. Then I am going to take um, saffron. Now I've got a line through that. 
so I can't really see what the number is. Is it 050? Looks like it might be. And I'm just going to go over that because it gives those two colours gives a really good skin tone. Just over the whole thing again. And together they make a really nice colour. So I'm just going to take my paper tortillion and just lightly, because I don't want to tear up the paper again, I'm just going to work those colours into that paper. Now, like I said earlier, this is a storybook. So it's not meant for colouring. There we are. That's actually performed so much better. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to take pale pink, which is 180, and we are going to put some pink coloration on his skin. Particularly around his little butt cheeks. And like I say, this is quick they're not going to tear your paper up. Oh, and I've sharpened them with, um, can you see that? No, because it's the wrong way around. This is my M&R sharpener, made in Germany. You can get replacement blades for them. It's got this big hole, and then it's got the standard hole. Now I use the big hole, and it will sharpen your pastel pencils to a proper point. It's amazing. So yeah, just Amazon absolutely brilliant for pastels. Okay, then we're going to take our little tortillion and we're going to work that colour in too. These pastel pencil pencils are brilliant for this kind of thing. They work really well in on Amazon paper. And the arrays. Okay, so just for the darker parts, I've got Venetian red. Now this is a blurry pencil, it's not my camera. It's a blurry pencil. So it's Venetian red and I think it's 630, I think. Okay, so Venetian red is quite dark. We're going to put that where all the darkest shadows are. And then we're going to blend that in. Where else have we got a little bit under here? And his little arm. And his fingers. And you don't have to be too precise. It will erase if you mess up. They're just a wonderful medium to work with. Particularly if you're nervous about your colouring. Okay, and work that in, and then you can just, providing you're not too heavy handed with this process, you can just keep layering it up until you get the colour that you want. And give it a bit of a blow. Right, we've got, I've got a little bit over here on his thumb, so I'm just going to and it erases beautifully, which it was a bit of a struggle, wasn't it, with the Prismas. I'm just going to see what other colours we've got in this set. Um, what's that? Well, we don't want burnt ochre on his skin. Um, we've got a bit of a brighter pink, so we've got, come on camera, coral, which is P190. So. I'm going to take, this is what it looks like now, very stubby. I'm going to take my m and sharpener over my bean. Give me a second, I just broke the end off, pulling it out the sharpener. Oh, I broke it. Oh, so she says, claims that the m and sharpener is amazing, but I think I've probably battered this pencil and dropped it. Yeah. I have. Isn't that frustrating? 
I do apologise, people. I'll just try and get right. I've got a little point on it. So I'm just going to, I want to pink up his butt. And like I say, we can just keep going. Hopefully the fireworks have died down now. Right. So let's try. And the good thing about the Derwent pastel pencils is you can buy them open stock. So you can get them on Colt pens or Jackson Art to them. I think actually he is better than with the Prismas. So I'm now going to take, go back to the flesh and I'm going to put some more colour on him. And probably then, well definitely, I'll put a little bit more of the Venetian red. This would be the medium that I will use in this book. Because it just seems to be working. <sighs> Blend that out a little bit. Right, here's the board and I would just turning it round so you keep a point, just clean off any colour and then we'll just work it back into his back wherever new spaces that we went and then blow him off there, one little peachy body <laughs> right let's have a look at his hair so we've got carbon black here which I'll show you in a minute let me just get the browns out that will be suited. So I think, okay, I wanted a ready colour. So let's try, I've got brown earth and dark sanguine. That should be a nice combination. So I'm going to go in with brown earth and in the darkest spots I'm going to flick that colour in, remembering, remembering his cute little double crown. That. So I'm just going to take my tortillion again and I'm going to, with the same motion, a little bit of flicking, just work that into the page. There we go. Then we're going to take the readier colour, which is the dark sanguine. Can you refocus camera? Thank you. And we're going to work that in. I missed his little ears out. Okay. And we're going to work that in. Blow it. I'm going to put a little bit of the flesh in his ear or on his ear. A little bit of the saff. Oh, this is flesh. That was saffron on his ear. And then a little bit of the Venetian red. And then I'll blend that. <sighs> there. Okay, that I think works people, I'm really quite happy with how that's come out. Just clean off that dark. I 
Right, now, scary part. Let's try a bit of fixative. If I don't throw it across the room. A little bit of fixative. I have this Frisk um, pastel fixative. It says suitable for use with pastel crayon, charcoal chalk and transfer lettering. I have my door open and my window open because obviously I'm not well. I'm just giving it a shake. Now I strongly recommend that you don't oversaturate because it will push the pigment through the page. So I'm just holding it at a distance and I'm just going to put a couple of puffs on like that and just pray that it doesn't go through. No it hasn't. Okay and that's it. That's all you need to do. Let that completely dry before you touch it again. <coughs> I'm going to try and edit this in before I say goodnight to you <laughs> on the video. So um, the next thing you see will be me saying goodbye. All right. Thanks, folks. OK, you guys, experiment time. So I've got my prismas out because that is what I'm planning on doing in this book because they are just so soft. I'm just going to grab another piece of paper, just a blank sheet of copy paper. Ooh, that camera didn't like that, did it? I'm just folding it in half and I'm going to pop it behind the image just to stop any print bleed, uh, print bleed through or anything like that. So we're just going to experiment and see what happens. This could be a complete disaster or it could be, let me just turn my light round, something that we're absolutely sorry about that, that we fall in love with. So this is my stubby little light peach because I'm running out of prismas drastically and I'm going to move that light back again. I don't think it helps that, she says, that much. So this is 927, if you can see that. My camera will stop shaking. And light peach and we are going to, <laughs> scarily, I'm going to take the front cover off <clears throat> and we're going to put a light coat of this over it. Okay, so this is just light peach. It colours very nicely. I'm going to have to build the layers up, obviously, like we would normally on any other colouring book. And just be very careful. His little butt cheeks. So I did look him up and his name is Buddy Fletcher. And he's not featured on the front cover because he's one of the um, children that the Christmasaurus has to try and help change from being naughty to nice and there's just a little paragraph on him or a, a, not a paragraph just a few lines on him or maybe it is a paragraph and um, where it explains that actually he's always taking his clothes off and running around in the nude and um, which is what they say what it says in the book that he's running around in the nudy so the Christmasaurus's job is to find out, apologies, that's because I've just posted this on Facebook, so my notifications are going to come through. So yes, yeah, so the Christmasaurus's job is to find out why this kid is so naughty, because he's getting into trouble all the time, running around with no clothes on. Here we go, we're getting colour now. And it turns out that the problem with little Nuddy Buddy, as his name is, is that he has an allergy to his clothes. So he gets very sore and itchy and has to take and takes his clothes off. So the Dinosaurus then buys him for Christmas um, clothes that he won't be itchy in. So it's a really sweet story and as it says in the description when I read it to you from Amazon Things aren't always as they seem, and certainly, in poor little Buddy's case, they certainly weren't. So this is another stubby one, because like I say, I'm getting desperate for Prismas. I'm just going to mute that, because that's going to drive us all bonkers. Bear with me. There we go. Okay, 
So this is 939, this is just Peach. Okay, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, running out of Prisma, so I'm going to have to get some. Um, I'm either going to have to, either going to be cheaper to buy a whole nother set, because I've, I've got quite a lot that need replacing. So I'm just going to go over now, I'm taking the Peach, and where the grayscale is its darkest, I'm going over that. We will come back. I'm not pressing hard at all, hence why I'm going to have to let the colour build up. Because also I didn't really know how the paper would respond. Anyway, I wanted to tell you all that, you know, things have been really tough. I've, I've had a really hard time, which is why I haven't been around. I've really struggled with my anxiety. Um, gosh, I was poorly the last time, again. And... <laughs> his little butt. And uh, oh, everything seemed to get... Why does everything seem to go wrong when you're at your lowest? So, my car packed up. The head gasket went on my car. Now, this was a 2008 car and not worth repairing. So, we got rid of that and I got a 2004 <laughs> smart car. Let me bring you in a little bit more. There you go. And um, loved it, absolutely loved it. And then it got full service history, you know, well, I was an idiot. Anyway, full service history. I brought it privately. When I took it for its MOT three months later, everything was wrong with it. Everything's wrong with it. Everything. Admissions. Um, the engine mount. <laughs> I'm going back in now with a little bit of um, light peach again. Uh, yeah, the engine mount. Um, fuel, cap seal, um, let's just have a look see how it's doing on the other page. Getting a little bit of print through on that, so I would always suggest putting paper behind. Um, what else? Um, oh, the list was just horrific when I got the car back. I was like, what in heaven's name is going on? So, back to Peach. So I thought to myself, well, you know, I need a car because of my fibromyalgia. I cannot walk to work or to the supermarket. I just can't do it. And um, so I thought, well, right, well, I'll get, have to get one on finance. I'm doing his little ears. So this is Nectar. 1092. And we're just going to deepen up some areas. Um, so I went and brought a 2014. We're going to give him a bit of, of a peachy butt. A 2014 smart car on finance. Um, was absolutely thrilled to bits with it. Couldn't wait to drive it out and about and on my first journey out with it I went to go to the supermarket to get some shopping and I just literally pulled out of our driveway and the engine light came on yeah I kid you not I couldn't believe it back to light peach um, so the engine light was on so I phoned the garage phoned the finance company and this was I'd had it I'd only driven it once back from the garage. I'd had it like five days. And um, so I said, no, thank you. You know, you can keep it. So <coughs> they wanted, obviously, to, they, they have to take it back because I have seven days to take it back. I'm just looking for some browns for his hair. Um, I think I might go chocolate and chestnut. Chocolate and chestnut. What does that look like? Have we got a scrap of paper? Yeah, so they wanted to, um, obviously, the opportunity to repair it. 
That's chocolate. We can go in with a little bit of chestnut. And then maybe some... That shouldn't be there. Maybe some putty beige, just to blend it all through. That works. Um, yes, yeah, so they wanted the opportunity to repair it. It's a dog saying hello as usual. So we drove. It was an hour and a half to get this car. It wasn't local. Um, so I'm just going in, sorry, I do apologise, with chocolate. And this is 1082. Drove an hour and a half to get this car. And and we had to take an hour and a half to get it back, obviously. Well, because I'm uh, very anxious and, again, I'm following the dark parts of his hair here. So it looks like he's got a little double crown going on. Um, because I'm very anxious, my husband said he would drive it back to the garage for me. Um, so me and my dad followed in the car behind. And we got, I don't know, 10 miles up the road and it went into limp mode, so lost all power up a dual carriageway. Um, this was not fun. And um, we had to pull over, hazard lights, the whole works. And this is a car I'd just brought on finance. So, obviously we took it back and I've got, I've got my money back, but um, I'm stuffed, don't have a car. So, this is, sorry, I do apologise, I'm chattering and wittering away. This is Putty Beige, 1083. And I'm just going to blend that out. Give him a little bit of highlight. And go back in with our chocolate. And just put some flicks of darker in there. Around his little double crown. And then we'll bring the chestnut back in. Cute, huh? All right. We're going to go back over that little peachy butt. So peach again. And I'm just going to give him some more colour. a nice bit of wax base there. So, I want a darker colour now. What colour can I use? I haven't used prisms for ages. What about this? Is that going to be too dark? Henna. Um, we'll try a little bit of henna, which is 1031. And I'm just going to... Because he's got his allergies. He needs a little rosy butt cheeks. Once you get that colour down, it responds better actually if you press a little harder on the paper. Um, get that initial colour down. Poor little chap. Yes, I'm without a car. Then my husband was ill. I've been ill over and over. And it just has been ridiculous. So anyway, moan over. <laughs> I just wanted to explain to you where I've been. So I'm just going to take the point off it. Off the pencil. I'm just scrubbing it on a piece of paper so it's not so sharp. And then I'm just going to blend in with nectar I've gone over it there, let's see how it erases this will be a good test yeah, raises okay so this is the AFMAT um, electric 
eraser that I was so kindly gifted. Um, where were we? Nectar. Round his neck. Then we'll go back in with peach. I'm going to take the point off them because the paper responds better if you can press a bit harder. Oh. I've snagged the paper there. What do you think? You have to be careful because the blunter the pencil, the better. Actually, it doesn't like a lot of working. It's fine on that side, sorry. I do apologise. Absolutely fine on that side. There's nothing coming through. A little bit of print on my spare page, but he actually seems to be fine. Let's move you out a little bit. He looks horrendous like that. Just gonna put, make sure my white's clean. Just gonna put a little bit of white for the lighter areas. Let's bring that out. So, oh, that's what I was going to tell you. It was like the last, the last. Oh, you're a bit too far out now. The last time I left you, we were doing Rita Berman. I did part one with you, and um, while I was ill, I was desperately trying to film to get it done. And I honestly, folks, I don't know what happened. I lost half the footage. It was hideous. Uh, I was really upset, and that did not help with my anxiety at all. Shoot, I didn't put the page back behind. Um, so I lost half the footage and I, I can only apologise, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just, like I say, just rounding off the points. On here. This is light peach, and I'm just going in. Oh. Yeah. Paper's not overly keen, people, I can tell you. Anyway, anyway, a bit of a firework display for you there. No, paper's not overly keen. It's like my prisms were too sharp. And it's kind of dug up some bits of the paper. So you'd have to be very careful not have excessively sharp pencils. And don't do what I said and press harder. Just very light touch. Poor little chappy. All that time he was getting into trouble for running round in the nuddy. <laughs> So that was peach, sorry. I'm just going back over where, because I'd pressed too hard, I tore a bit of the paper up. Light strokes, let the colour build up, like you would if you were using polychromos. 
but this is why I went in on a front page just to see what would happen. Right, let's do a bit more of that hair. Back in with chocolate. I'm going to take a tiny bit of black, a tiny bit of black 935, and I'm just going to put a few little bits of black in. Just deepen that up, and then I'm going to go back in with chestnut. Sorry, chestnut. There. I don't think I can do any more because I'm going to scuff him up. Um, peach I used. And I don't want to... Because I pressed too heavy... And the paper didn't like it. So I will know now on the other pages that you need to let the wax build up. <clears throat> but I think I've got away with it. I need to let the wax build up because it's delicate story paper, it's not colouring paper. But I think I've got away with that. What do you think? <laughs> so I just wanted to bring you a quick... Oh, I've got a great streak across my page now. Of course I would. Lucy, really? I just wanted to bring you a quick update on um, an explanation for what's going on or what, what's been going on and do a quick colour along with you. If I let you see the next page, there's the next page. There's no damage to it whatsoever. It's perfectly smooth, but I would, if you're going to do it, I would recommend lots and lots of light layers. Don't overwhelm it with heavy layers. Let the wax build up to protect that paper. There we go. And it will cover back up, but just be delicate. There we go. I'll leave it at that before I destroy him. Right, let's put the front cover back on. Let's put the cover back on. I think inks hopefully would work really well in this. Let's come out. So, what have we got? We've got him to do, obviously, but we've got a little nuddy boy on our front page. And I think, going to have to be careful, but I think it's going to look spectacular. Anyway, I'm going to release that. So you'll have had the Linda Ravenscroft flip through today. And this little Let's Catch Up video, see what you think. Um... If I don't get a lot of interest, I won't do it back on YouTube, but I just thought it was something a little bit different that I could share with you and, and, and something to do quickly to catch up so I didn't feel overwhelmed. All right, my lovely friends, I am going to put the dust cover back on. I'm going to leave it there for tonight um, and we will catch up very shortly, hopefully. Maybe do a picture in the Linda Ravenscroft book. But I just want to let me know what your thoughts are on this kind of thing. Because I think it I think it's adorable. Alright, folks. Until we meet again, take really, really good care of yourselves. Now night.